Hello everybody and welcome to Weather Mountains, my tutorial let's play, or my overly explained let's play, whatever you would prefer. Just to get you caught up on the goal for this particular series is we would like to acquire a noble. And once we acquire a noble, I will consider this series complete. Up until now, we've built a trap setup, we've done above ground farming, we've done below ground farming, and we are now waiting for the dwarves to arrive to trade. But something that we've been doing in the background this whole time is I've been producing lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of cloth fabric. So let's just have a real quick look at how much of that we currently have. Uh, because it seems to have become a rather large amount, uh, we have a decent amount of silk, which I wouldn't want to use for much. We have some sheep's wool cloth as well, as well as some llama wool cloth and some alp alpaca wool cloth and some cave spider silk cloth and 576 rope breed cloth, meaning we have 130 dwarves. I think the next thing we're going to do is we're going to queue up some cloth clothing for our dwarves. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to type in the word cloth, and then we're going to see what our dwarves have available. We can make caps, cloaks, coats, Dress, gloves, hoods, loincloths, mittens, and uh, robes, as well as socks and shoes. So let's just, you know, start at the bottom. And we're going to start off with trousers. We're going to do 150. Now, this is going to produce some extras, but that is fine. Um, and then we're going to go from there to loincloths, and we are going to produce 150. Now, this might take a little bit over a year to complete, as they are going to exceed the amount that we have. But frankly, I like to just have a good amount sitting around, uh, because I generally, in, in, in my opinion, I think it's a good thing for you to kind of have a surplus. Although I just realized I que queued up loin, loin the, the wrong kind of loincloth. Uh, so let's do... Uh, actually, you know what? Let's, let's make... Why don't we make... Uh, just a hundred uh, silk loincloths because we do have several types of silk. Um, and then cloth, let's go to uh, robes. We're going to make 150 of those. We're going to type in cloth and we are going to make uh, hoods, which I'm a big fan of personally. We're going to make cloth uh, gloves. We're going to make cloth um, dresses. We're going to make cloth uh, coats. We're going to make cloth uh cloaks and we're going to make cloth we made hoods we don't we don't need caps so just a re retread we got cloak coat dress uh glove hood robe loincloth sock trousers and then shoes are the last thing that we're missing at which point i think we'll just we'll do we'll do um yarn shoes so i'm gonna do 80 shoes we're gonna do 80 cloaks we're gonna do 80 coats we're gonna do 80 dresses. We're going to do uh, 80 gloves. We're going to do um, 100 hoods, and then the rest are going to be 150 or 100 all the way up to the top. And this is going to give just about every dwarf some form of new clothing item, as well as uh, just keeping them generally pretty happy. We also have our aquifer here, which is uh, very effectively um, sending stuff in. And also there appears to be fish in here, which means maybe we should set this as a fishing zone. But from the looks of things, our dwarves have arrived to trade, which is good news indeed. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump down to our trading depot. Now, something that they've been requesting from us for a little bit now is tools, which means I have prepared a good number of wheelbarrows uh, to trade with them. We got iron wheelbarrows, copper wheelbarrows, and, uh, well, one peachwood one, which we're not going to sell. So we're going to go to these copper ones, which sell for a little bit, and we got these iron ones, which sell for a lot. <laughs> um, so we are going to queue up a whole bunch of those, get all of that stuff brought up so that we can trade, and uh, hopefully the, the trading in this whole process goes well. And it looks like the outpost liaison has also arrived, so we're going to have to do diplomacy right now. And they say... Um, uh, they, and uh, Bubness, our mayor, meets with the outpost liaison in the mayor's office, and they say, I am your liaison from the Mountain Homes. Let's discuss your situation. Merit deserves reward. I come empowered to establish this colony as official land of our realm. Can you imagine the trade wagons? There are, of course, responsibilities, and the nobility must live well. Do you have anyone suitable for this elevation? So this is our goal to anybody watching this series. The goal is to acquire... A noble. This is how you acquire a noble. You trade with them enough that they're happy with you, and then they give you a noble. Obviously, Mayor Bubness is clearly the most qualified. So we're going to find the Mayor Bubness on this list. Where are you, Bubness? Bubsy? Bub-bib-bub-bib-bub-bub-bub-bub-bub-bub-bub-bub-bub-bub-bub-bub-bub-bub-bub-bub-bub-bub-bub-bub-bub-bub-bub-bub-bub-bub-bub-bub-bub-
Bubness. There we go. Um, so now uh, there is much to share. Information has been added to Civilization and World Info. Um, what would we, we like to require from them? Uh, or acquire from them. I'm just going to ask for dogs, since we don't actually have any ladies, and some cats. Uh, secondly, I'm also going to ask for uh, large cut gems of various varieties, and uh, for no particular reason other than I would like to. And uh, scrolling down, scrolling down, that's about it. How about that? Because there isn't much that we really need to trade for right now, and they would like anvils in return. Well, that's... <laughs> Look at you, with your fancy tastes. So now if I check this, you can just see that we have a mayor. We don't actually have the official paperwork signings yet. We need to wait for the wait trade caravan to head home before we will get the official paperwork stating that we are um, of importance. However, something that I would like to note, which I'm not really going to be covering too much in this series, in order to trade, once you have a noble, uh, the trade depot needs to be above ground because they will be bringing in... Uh, large amounts of stuff via wagons. Um, wagons cannot go downstairs and require a three by three wide uh, hallway, meaning suddenly our hallways no longer work. But what I could very easily do here is uh, give us kind of a alternate route or something into here, which maybe we'll do in another series, but not for this particular one, because the goal for this series is simply to acquire a noble. So, we're now going to go through here, and then the goal for the rest of this here episode is going to be satisfying the noble and building them everything that they need, which is going to be a tomb, it's going to be a throne room, or an office, it's going to be a big fancy, 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 fancy bedroom, and it's going to be a dining hall, and uh, we're going to give them everything that they want and desire on that front. So let's just wait for these items to finish being brought up here, and then we can trade. Also, if you look, Bubness just got his uh, promotion here, so we're going to need to uh, definitely make sure that he's uh, doing proper tasks instead of just simply being mayor, manager, broker, and everything else. Also, because we are now uh, a place with a noble, the Hillocks of Admire Whips. I, I too am my, admire whips. Uh, a short walk to the southeast uh, looks to your thriving economy for its future prosperity. And if we go over to the world map, if you're curious about where that is, it's this little light blue place right here. So if we actually click on this, if we have a messenger assigned, I could request a Dishmab Book Clubbers. What a good name, Book Clubbers, very dwarfy. Uh, we could request that Dishmab, who is currently living at Admired Whips, come to our fortress to work for us and instead of simply living there. If you would like to acquire more people quickly, you can do that that way. Now uh, we're going to sit here and wait. We got two more items to bring up. It's gonna take a little bit. It appears Bubness has gotten very busy, and that is okay. Is here to trade now. And it looks like the last item's coming up right now. Bang. Done. All right, let's mark all. That's way too heavy. <laughs> so what, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to unmark all. I'm going to go through here, and I am just going to see if I can mark all for them. Mark all for us. They get a massive profit. They will be very happy. I'm going to remove some of these wheelbarrows here. And then I'm going to tr trade. My beast's burden cannot... Okay, so it's too heavy is the problem. Well, we are being too generous to them, it appears. So let's just simply remove some of these wheelbarrows so that we still have enough value to trade for the entirety of the, the caravan um, and can also give them some gifts on top. Wow, that's actually a really tight window. Let's see how much I can give them in return. Is I literally can't give them anything. Well, I wanted to give you some gifts. Oh, well, <laughs> that's unfortunate. Anyway, we, we were able to trade with them and uh, get the entirety of it. So that's gonna give us some fish, some food, various other things, uh, which is very good for our fortress. And now, if I look at this, we have a mayor slash baron. Now, our uh, mayor here uh, does already have some stuff assigned to him. However, I'm actually gonna go to the mayor's office right here, this whole area for Bubness, and I'm going to leave vacant because they will eventually elect a different mayor uh, because Generally, the uh, Baron does not also get elected mayor. So what we're going to do here is we are going to give our Baron a lovely, 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 well-appointed um, space here. And this is going to be our our uh, Baron's sleeping zone. So we're going to queue that up first. Also, over here... Uh, we could, you know, maybe leave this as the as as the 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 noble space for the for the for the um, for, for for our baron here. However, it just doesn't quite seem to be 
glamorous enough. So how about we just remove that, leave it vacant, and uh, expand our tavern? I mean, like, you know, we do have uh, some royalty, or so almost royalty, I guess, um, a noble in this place now. So why don't we just make this into a public space? Allow the dwarves to have a little bit more space to exist in. In fact, we'll increase the priority of this and get it done a little bit quicker. And why don't we even remove this wall here? I, not, fortunately, the dwarves won't mind the noise of the tavern. It's it's just going to be a lovely space. Looks like they're telling stories as well. They're quite excited, I would, I would imagine, at the fact that we are a noble fortress at last. It's it's a grand, grand day for Weather Mountains, the city of Weather Mountain. So something else we're going to need is we're going to need a tomb. Now, what better place to build as a tomb for our uh, baron than down here in this lower layer? And also, we because we have a baron now, we need to reassign some other people to do other tasks. So Mincott here, who is a talented record keeper, how about you take over the record keeping job? And to uh, our broker over here, how about Iteb, who's currently a carpenter, take over the broker task. And then um, for the manager, we don't need Bubness doing that. You're better than that now, Bubness. We're going to assign this to the first dwarf who's got some skills in that. So we're going to go and assign some offices and places to other dwarves who can get these tasks done. So um, I'm going to actually place a, uh, a throne right here, uh, which can just be that. And I'm going to place a table right next to it. This doesn't need a table, but I like it when they have tables. I feel better about it, frankly. I feel kind of bad when I give like just it, the worst offices to my poor, poor dwarves. So our uh, manager here can have that space because a manager is a really important job. Um, our bookkeeper, I think, maybe could have down here. And uh, we'll give them this cobaltite throne as well as a table right in front of it. And this zone right here is going to be a office. There it is. And uh, that's just my brain resetting. Don't worry about it. And uh, so this office is going to be assigned to our bookkeeper. So now let's just take a real quick peek. And it looks like uh, our bookkeeper, sweet, as well as our, uh, as well as our um, new manager, are both satisfied, which is very good. Um, and of course, you know, Mayor uh, Baron up here is still doing their thing. And these two rooms will be assigned to our new mayor whenever that gets acquired. So I really would like to increase the priority on this and get this area done here faster. So let's bump up the priority there, and uh, we're going to. Um, set all of this to be smooth so that these dwarves can use and enjoy this area as much as possible. Also, this tomb here has been dug out, so whoop, some migrants have arrived. We're a popular place now. Uh, now that the uh, tomb down here is all set up, what we're going to do is we're going to set that to be smooth, which is going to run most of the dwarves down into the underground to go get that done. And then we are going to uh, place a coffin in here. Um, just make sure you're not coughing on the coffin because that is very disrespectful. So now that we've got the coffin placed, I can actually set this up as a tomb and we can get a real quick idea of what kind of value this is going to have. Um, I'm going to assign this tomb to our Baron, Baron Bubness, after all. Uh, and Baron Bubness, um, d d do you approve Baron Bubness of the, of the quality of this tomb? No, you don't. Well... That's unfortunate. We're going to need to increase the value of this. And now the way we're going to increase the value of this is I'm going to remove this coffin real quick. And we are going to put down some flooring. I, we, of course, would, would like it to um, satisfy uh, ba ba Baron Bubness as much as possible. Because Baron Bubness is very important to the long-term survivability of this fortress. And, uh, of course, we would like Baron Bubness to be happy with their space. So we are going to give them... How about some lovely, lovely jet floors. Uh, and then this front door here can be gold, which I do have four bars of. And uh, we'll put a door on, of course. So we'll just wait for this uh, lovely flooring to be placed. And then we will uh, check in with the other room that we have under construction. We are going to, of course, replace that coffin, the closest one. And uh, we're going to jump over to statues. We're going to place a couple statues in here. Of course, you know, any good uh, baron requires at least a couple statues in there, too. And something to note about uh, barons is they really, really, really like weapon racks. Now, I, I kind of forgot to put those in that uh, that their, uh, that their barracks from earlier, but I fortunately do have these lying around now, so I can just place some of these in here as well. I think we'll do three of each, because I'm pretty sure they need five in total, but I need to check under their requirements. So let's just have a, a, a real quick peek once they get that doorway piece placed. 
Um, and uh, I'm going to put an engraving of whatever the dwarves feel like engraving um, right there on the front door. So it's going to just give them a second and they're going to come over here and they're going to engrave that. Also worth noting, if you would like to specify what kind of engraving uh, you're going to place, before you unpause, if you click specify image, you could say Bubness. Or um, I guess we'd need to like look them up by their real name, but we could say Eurist, and then it gives us all of these fancy Eurists, like uh, this dwarf here. Eurist in the dwarf born in seventy seven was the youngest son of the person of Attis. Uh, let's just place a designed uh, dwarfy image right there. We're gonna unsuspend this, unsuspend these last few, get all this stuff together, and uh, then we're going to place a door in that front space right there. As soon as this dwarf is done engraving that gold. We will have basically everything that we need for this little tomb, I think. Let's find out. Mudstone doors, maybe? And uh, check the noble screen. They are happy with their tomb. A fine tomb, nonetheless. Now we shall move up two layers uh, over to this room. This is going to be the noble's uh, sleeping space. So we'll get that smoothing right there. And then we will need a, a dining room for the noble, which... Um, how about a, uh, a a space right here next to the kitchens so that our noble can witness their meals being cooked in real time? And uh, we can double this up as an office, uh, ideally, if the size ends up working out. And I, I have kind of a neat idea of something that we could do for the uh, bottom half of this as well once it's been dug out. So now that this space down here is ready, we're going to queue this up as a, uh, well, a noble indeed bedroom so what we're going to do is we're going to place a bed now i'm curious about how many gems we have lying around because i haven't checked in a little while but what i'm going to do is i'm going to jump over to f to uh constructions here i'm going to try and make a couple gem windows excellent we got plenty let's use black morians black morians we're going to place some gem windows in this space which will definitely um make our noble quite happy as well as some green as well then after that, we're going to place, of course, the the thing that the things that every dwarf of any level of respect requires, which is a couple of chests, as well as well. I mean, they I, they require more because they are a noble. But any dwarf, uh, self-respecting dwarf, would require some chests and cabinets. And looks like we're out of cabinets. Oh no! Well, I'm not going to remove cabinets from other dwarves because that would god be a goddamn crime. Cabinet, rock cabinet. Let's queue up uh, ten, and that'll be plenty. Now, checking under bet uh, under this, they do require two chests total, okay, um, or two more chests, and uh, they need one weapon rack and armor stand, which means they're almost good to go. So what we're gonna do here for under military is I'm going to place an armor stand, an armor stand, and I'm gonna place another weapon rack and another weapon rack. Now that we've got all of this furniture in here, I'm going to assign this as a bedroom. I'm going to set it as paint, and I'm going to place it down here. And then we're going to assign it to Baron Bubness. Now keep in mind, this is going to end up with, with Baron Bubness having two sets of quarters, which is kind of okay. I, I'm not really the sort of person to go through and worry too much about making sure that I remove their old one. Um, but uh, otherwise, you'd have to figure out which one, which bedroom was assigned to them and remove it. An easy way to do that, though, if you do wish to, is you could go into the places room and you could scroll down find their bedroom jump to it or in, in this case uh, scroll down find their bedroom so under bubness where is baron bubness there you are we could jump over and this is the other bedroom they have assigned still i thought i unassigned you from that one you little greedy bastard uh anyway we're gonna go over here and uh i'm going to just make sure that uh bubness is assigned to this okay let's see Satisfied with their bedroom. Excellent. And uh, then this bedroom, I'm just going to um, make not available until we get another mayor elected, which may or may not happen in this particular here episode. Now that the bedroom is satisfied and the tomb is satisfied, we have one room left, which I've already got them working on. This bedroom, or this room here, uh, is going to be set up as a dining room and a uh, office area. So I'm going to cut out these two walls and we're going to fill them up with gem windows just for maximum um, fancy, lovely beauty here. And um, I'm going to place a bunch of tables and the tables, I don't really care about the color. And I'm going to place a table and a throne over here in the corner. 
Now, this is going to be their uh, office setup, and this is going to be the dining room setup. I, I, I like them to be big and fancy with as much stuff as possible everywhere. Dwarves are leaving clothing everywhere right now because um, they're all going and claiming new clothing. They will come back and get their clothing eventually, I hope, um, or they won't. De depends on the dwarf, I suppose, and whether or not they're a messy dwarf or not. Um, I'm going to queue up some flooring in the middle of this as well because I just for some reason like placing flooring in places. Uh, so we're gonna do, ah, what's a color I wanna look at in here? How about some, ah, I don't have enough petrified wood quite. How about some dolomite? Um, and then around the edges here, I'm going to also place flooring. Um, let's do bauxite there. And over here, I'm going to do more bauxite. Um, although I'm using bauxite boulders for one side, I'll be honest. Um, then I'm going to queue up two separate zones so that we can keep track of this nice and easily. So the first one here is going to be a uh, dining room. And then the second one here is going to be... Uh, did I set that up as a meeting hall or a dining... I set that up as a meeting area. What? A dining area. I can click <laughs> the right button. Um, and then a office. Um, now the office is going to be this kind of top side and the dining area is going to be this bottom side. Both, of course, are going to be assigned to uh, Baron Bubness, which is definitely going to be the title of this final episode of this here series. Um, I'm sorry for assigning the wrong dwarf to that for a second. They, that dwarf just got very mixed signals from the fortress. And um, then what we can do here is we can see how they feel about it. Well, it looks like they're actually satisfied, which is kind of miraculous, actually. Um, but uh, let's uh, give them the uh, gem windows regardless. I don't mind gem windows being a little bit rainbowy, so we'll just give them whatever gems are closest by. And uh, we're going to unsuspend that, and this is going to have a circle uh, or a set of engraved uh, images on the floor. It's going to be a very nice looking spot. And uh, then that uh, satisfies this fortress. We have overwhelmingly happy moods generally with a couple of semi-unsatisfied dwarves, but we're sorting that out. The only pissed off dwarf is a child who frankly will probably never be fully satisfied. And uh, that brings us to the end of this Let's Play. It's a bit bittersweet, I would say. Um, but... Uh, we have achieved our goal of gaining a Baron. Now, um, I have attached save files to various different versions of this Let's Play up until this point, but I would just like to note that, um, uh oh, Temple Complex and High Priest, well, it's a task for you, I suppose, because of what I'm about to say. If you would like to continue this Let's Play, please do. There is a link in the description where you can download it. It's uploaded to my Discord server as well as the Dwarf Fortress File Depot. So because, for me, this Let's Play is completed, we've achieved our goal of acquiring a noble, it's now up to you to finish it. What are you going to do with it? I would like to see what you would do. Please uh, download the save file and then jump over to my Discord server and share any screenshots of what you do with this fortress in there. I'm curious to know if you go to war with the elves, maybe you attack the humans, or start a civil war, or dig deeply and greedily. I would be very interested to know. Of course, there's many things left unfinished in this fortress and uh, maybe unsatisfactory, but that wasn't the point of this playthrough. The point of this playthrough was simply to acquire a noble. The next playthrough I'm going to do, uh, I will start in a week or so, maybe two weeks. Uh, we'll see what we end up doing. Uh, leave down a link down in the, or a, qu a comment down in the in the comment section of this video, letting me know what kind of let's plays you would like to see me achieve, or what kind of playthroughs you'd like to see me do. Maybe something a little bit themed. Don't worry about challenges. I don't really consider many things in Dwarf Fortress to be a challenge per se. But uh, if you have a particular theme that you would like to see me uh, tackle in a playthrough in this format, where I try and just simply talk about everything that's happening in real time, let me know down in the comments section of this video. Thank you very much for watching this series. Thank you very much for making part one the most viewed video on this channel by a long shot with over 200,000 views as, at the time of recording. And thank you very much to everybody who watched all the way through. And I look forward to starting more Let's Plays on this channel. If you would like to see my face while I play video games on the internet, you can find me at twitch.tv slash blindirl. And if you would like to hear my voice while I talk about video games that I enjoy, check out my podcast. Links down in the description. And if you want to get your name on the screen right now and fund this channel directly, you can do that via my Patreon or the YouTube members option. YouTube members is only two bucks and it will get whatever your YouTube handle is into the credits of this video, into the videos going forward. Thank you very much for watching and I look forward to starting a new series.